Hey guys, this is Alan Fire with another tutorial. Welcome back to Visionary Fire. Today we're going to be doing something a little different, but quite special. So the things we're going to cover in this tutorial should be particularly uh, useful to quite a wide variety of viewers. So what will we be talking about? Well, have you ever been watching a movie or video and at one point the audio was too quiet, so you turn up the volume and and the next thing you know all the action comes in and everything is super loud and then you have to turn down the volume well probably like this tutorial so I'm gonna be showing you guys how you can automatically adjust the volume of an audio track over time such that the average of the volume at a given range is the same as that range in another point in time so in other words no turning up and down the volume on your speakers we're gonna kind of flatten out the uh, volume over time and we're most definitely not manually keyframing the volume of the audio over time no that is the way that cavemen edit audio we will do this process automatically within our software so it doesn't really make a difference how long your audio track is it's not more work because because of automatic computer software it doesn't matter it can do work pretty fast so I couldn't find a way to do this anywhere else on the internet so I came up with my own method but if anyone does know of a way to do this in any software please leave a comment and let us know so strange as this may sound we'll be using Adobe After Effects to do this process I know sounds weird but interestingly enough this is the only software that had all the right features to accomplish this result so here we have a completion of clips this is 30 minutes long and it would be really hard to go through and manually adjust the volume of each of these clips to match the volume of the other clips and this really is a common problem you know when I'm making these tutorials sometimes I'm closer to the mic and sometimes I'm further away there but there is a lot of volume variation over time that really is not preferred so step one is to move your audio into After Effects so what we're gonna do is render out this audio and import it into After Effects so to render out this audio I'll go to file export media and uh, the first thing I'll do is change the format to uh, waveform audio uh, then find a location to save this file and then hit export okay then we want to go here into After Effects and import the rendered audio so right click import import file so once you have your audio in After Effects we're ready for step two so grab this audio drag it into a new composition um, by holding over this icon let go so step two is to convert the audio volume values into keyframe values but this is a really long clip. This is over 30 minutes long, and that's that would be a lot of keyframes. So we can actually view the waveform of this audio. Open open this up here. Go to audio waveform, and uh, here we have the waveform. We can see towards the beginning it's a little bit louder, and then the volume changes over time. But as I was saying, that's a, that would that would be a lot of audio keyframes. So let's say there's 24 frames in every second, and then there's 60 seconds in each minute, and there's 30 minutes, and so multiply that by 30. That would be 43,000 keyframes, and that's kind of a lot. So what we can do to reduce that number is go over here to the composition settings and reduce the frame rate, because it creates a keyframe for every frame. So if we bring this frame rate down to something like 4, there's only going to be 4 frames in every second. So now there will be 8 times less keyframes, and that will help out a lot. So let's go ahead and convert this um, volume value into keyframes. So we'll click on the audio layer, go to animation, keyframe assistance, convert audio to keyframes. And we'll let it go through this process. Okay, so what that will do is automatically create a new null object. And on this null object, we'll have here in the effects and controls three different slider values. We can delete the left channel and right channel. We just want a mixture of both. So this is just an empty value, it's just a number. But this number shows us the volume of the audio at that point in time. We can come down here, open this up, and we can even view the graph. So you can see here we got all these crazy keyframes representing the volume of this audio layer. So now we're ready for step three, which is to take an average of all these volume keyframes. We want to figure out the kind of average volume in that section of the audio. So the first thing I want to do is remove these bottom keyframes because we want the average to be defined by the noise that is actually happening not the just background really quiet stuff see for instance here when there's no volume this is actually gonna affect the places around it because we're finding the average so we actually want to delete these very bottom keyframes so we'll have a better average so I'll go right here select all these keyframes and then hit the delete button okay there we go that should really help so to actually smooth these keyframes out and kind of find the average what we're gonna do is 
is use an expression. So we'll hold alternate and click the stopwatch right here to add an expression. We'll go, we'll go out of the graph editor and uh, we can type an expression right here. But what we're actually going to do is we're going to cheat a little bit. We're going to go into After Effects expression inventory thing here. We're going to go to property and choose smooth. This smooth expression here. And uh, let's go look back at the graph. Let's see what it did. We can. What we want to do is click this icon here so we can view the expression in the graph. Let's just zoom in. We can see here what it's doing. So it's smoothing these keyframe values out a little bit. That's pretty cool, I think. But we want it to be way more smoothed out than this. Way more of an average. So here's what we do. Let's go down here to the expression. Let's change the width to something like 15. And it does seem to be more of an average, but now it's just really choppy. That's not good. So what we can do is turn up the samples. Let's turn this way up to like 75. We now have this smooth average of the volume over time. So there's a lot of calculation going on here, but computers are fast at numbers, math, and calculation. So it's not too much of a problem, but to make this go a lot faster, what we can do is convert this expression into just keyframes. So what I'll do is go up here to animation, keyframe assistance, and do convert expression to keyframes. Look at there, now we got this. Now we just have keyframes of kind of the average volume of the audio at any, at any point. We could even smooth this again because it's looking still a little bit jagged. So. Now, when we converted the expression to keyframes, it automatically disabled the expression, so I'll click this. And maybe turn the width down to about 8 or so, and then just reconvert the expression to keyframes again. So, animation, keyframe assistance, convert expression to keyframes. And you can keep doing this, make this as smooth as you want. So this is a nice, a smooth average of the <clears throat> volume. And now we're ready for step 4, which is to apply this information to our volume to even everything out. So this is actually quite simple. All we have to do is go in here in the audio layer, go to the audio parameter, and uh, add an expression to the audio levels. So I'll hold alternate click the stopwatch there. And uh, what I'll do is go over here to the pick whip and choose the average value slider. So we're going to subtract the average. Um, but right now the problem's even worse because we've made the audio levels equal to the average. So if the volume is averagely louder, it's going to make the audio levels greater and it's going to increase the problem. But here's what we want. When the average is greater, we want the audio levels to go down. So we need to, we need to turn this, this expression negative instead of positive. So you can see here there's a temp variable and we want to make this negative. So we'll put a minus sign right in front of everything here and this will make it negative so it'll subtract the average value. So look at there, you can see it kind of flattened everything out. Now it did make... All, the whole volume averagely less because we did subtract the average. So to add some of that back before the minus sign here, we can put something like 3 or 4. Temp is equal 3 minus the average, not 0 minus the average. Looking awesome. Everything is automatically now evened out. That's pretty much how we do it. So the last step would be to render this out and bring it back into our editing software. So to render this out, we're going to click here, go to Composition, Add to Render Queue, and uh, let's click here on Lossless. Let's change the format from AVI to WAV, WAV, and uh, 48,000 hertz, 16 bit. That's just like we rendered it before. Let's hit OK, and then we find a place on our computer to render this out. Click the Render button, import it into our editing software, and we are finished. So I hope you guys have had a blast learning today. I've certainly had fun going through this with you guys. And like I've been saying, this should most definitely come into use. In fact, most likely I'll use it in this very episode. <laughs> oh, and, and please check out the support link in the description to see how you can help keep this channel on fire. Uh, these videos do get a lot of views and apparently a lot of people are benefiting from them. And that really does make my effort worth it. But I also hope a few of you guys will take initiative to help support this channel through Patreon or the other options listed in the support link webpage. Anyway, consider subscribing so you won't lose access to this channel after you leave. My name is Alan Fire, and until next time, I'll leave you to it.